This is a 52-year-old female. We're doing uh, essentially a diagnostic shoulder scan on her, which was significant for an overhanging subdeltoid bursitis. Also was able to appreciate some rotated cables as well during this exam. And we decided to actually aspirate a little bit of fluid out of that overhanging subdeltoid bursa. And then we injected her with some cortisone initially during the cortisone injection. Some of it went superficial, but then I was able to advance the needle deep and the rest of it went into the actual subdeltoid bursa and spread proximally. This is our patient, a two-year-old female here for her right shoulder, pain for about two months. Um, no injury, pain at night, pain with motion. This exam, she can flex to about 170, she can AB duck to about 150. Positive uh, Hawkins, pain with internal rotation. So she had a month of physical therapy, which really did not help her much. We're going to go ahead today and do a cortisone shot. Before doing that, I just want to take a peek at the, some of the tendons here. Here we're going to focus on doing a subracomial injection, just injecting the, the pendant part of the subdeltoid bursa. Here's the bursa removed, and now we're just looking at the overlying rotated cuff. Here we can see the infraspinatus and the teres minor posteriorly. And here we're going to start making the cuff translucent. And here you can appreciate the rotator cuff cord, which is essentially a crescent type thickening of the capsule underneath the rotator cuff, which essentially tethers the rotator cuff together and reinforces it. Here's the bursa put back, but this is an enlarged bursa that's swollen. And here's our initial attempt where we were a little bit superficial to the bursa. You can see how the needle is essentially just superficial to the bursa and the injectate is pushing the bursa in somewhat. And now we're going to advance the needle a little bit more into the bursa itself. And now you can see how the bursa expands with the injection. Here we're just rotating our view to get a different perspective of exactly where the needle is. And here we're rotating to an anterior perspective. Again, we can see the needle within the subdeltoid bursa. Get a biceps tendon. So there's the biceps tendon on the bottom right corner. Um, not very clear, probably from anisotropy. And there you can see the pec major tendon coming into play as you go distal. Right side of the screen is actually medial. Get a little view of it here. She's thin, and so she has a thin biceps tendon. And here's our biceps tendon in long axis. Looking at her subscapularis tendon. And we're looking at her subscap tendon in long acids. Okay. Subscap tendon looks essentially normal, but what we did find was this overhanging subdeltoid bursa. That shows some fluid here, however, as we go towards the inferior part of the subscap tendon. We're going medially now. Left side of the screen is medial. See the coracoid process. And there's the coracoid with the subscap tendon as well. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and just look at it in short access real quick here. Left, left side of the screen is cephalad. And here's our subscap tendon in short access, which is again normal. And yeah, I'm going to put her in a modified grasp position. Just like that. There's our biceps tendon, we can see it right on the left side of the screen. Left side is medial. So that's the anterior margin of the supraspinatus tendon. Um, when you see that biceps tendon. And then we're going kind of posterior and we see the supraspinatus tendon come into view. So she does have some overhanging subdeltoid bursitis actually. So it's interesting how far the subdeltoid bursa can go and here we can see a rotated cable I believe within the rotated cuff. Give you a tendon. Here's supraspinatus tendon in short access. In short access you can see the biceps tendon, which again the anterior margin of the supraspinatus tendon. Left side of the screen is posterior. Here we got that biceps tendon. So we know that's the anterior margin of your supraspinatus tendon. You see some subdeltoid bursitis. Again, here's this, her subdeltoid so bursitis, which is quite apparent. So, infraspinatus tendon looks intact here. And here's a probe, uh, a posterior aspect of the shoulder, a long axis, there's infraspinatus tendon, which is normal looking. Here we are on short axis. 
You can see a little septum kind of between the two muscles of the teres minor and infraspinatus. Uh, left side of the screen is infraspinatus, right side is teres minor. And that looks pretty well preserved. We're just trying to get that bursa. I'm curious if we can get anything out of it. Actually, are getting some fluid out. We got a little bit of fluid out of this bursa, um, and it's really easy target. It is the subdeltoid bursa, so all you need to do is get the needle on that, so you're not even near the supraspinatus tendon. Uh, less chance for any kind of uh, injury during the procedure, and it's quite an easy target to hit. So here's the um, initial injectate, which was a little bit superficial to this bursa. And then we advance the needle further and we will within the subdeltoid bursa itself for the remaining part of the injection. And you can see how that travels proximally. So again, initially this was a little bit superficial, the injection, but then we, I quickly advanced the needle further deep and uh, it was within the subdeltoid bursa that was overhanging uh, the greater tuberosity. Go out to the side, all the way up. Mas, we injected with one of the uh, lidocaine and one of methylprednisone. Mas? Es mejor el dolor, es, es menos dolor, less pain. Okay, great.